So in any case, let's look at how we set up a compressor. This is how I do it. I like to uh, take the attack and the release and put it at their fastest settings. That means the compressor is reacting as quickly as possible and releasing as quickly as possible. The next thing I like to do is grab the ratio and put it up as high as it will go. In this case, 100 to 1. It's pretty big. Over here where it says knee, knee is, if you notice, if I grab this, notice how it softens, it rounds. So all the way to the right, that's a soft knee compressor. All the way to the left, it's hard knee. So I'm going to keep it on the hard side because I really want to want to hear how that compressor is reacting. The next thing I want to do is set my threshold. I usually set my threshold to about, well, let's try minus, like, minus 12 for right now and see what happens. But it also depends on what's going on with the actual track. Again, what I'm aiming for, though, is when I hit play, like, I'm not even getting anything because my track is so low. So I'm going to grab this and pull it down. Now I'm starting to get the compressor to react. Now, it sounds a little distorted. That's okay. We're actually really able to hear the compressor working. Next thing I do is I'm going to focus on the attack section. So I'll grab the attack and I'm going to push this up. So you push it up far enough. And what that is doing is I'm delaying how the compressor is reacting. Uh, it's taking longer from 10 I guess those are microseconds, into 10 milliseconds, right? So if I push it up, upwards of, say, 15 milliseconds, that means it's taking the compressor 15 milliseconds to react. So what that, what that does is allows the original transient of my kick drum to come through. This is how I can reserve that, that extra crack. It actually will accentuate the crack. It makes it sound thicker or bigger in terms of the how it starts. The next thing I want to look at is my release. The release is how long does it take the compressor to get back to its nominal state. I'm going to grab this and we'll pull it up. Now if I go too far, notice my gain reduction. It's not even fully resetting. It's not where I want to be. What I want to do is I want to find the bounce. I want to find the rhythm so I get that sort of bouncing feeling. And it's okay if it sounds pumpy right now. We'll, We'll pull it back a little bit, but I'm going to drop this, so we're getting... Now I can bypass this. That's the original. That's the compressed. So I'm, I've got the attack and the release portion now working correctly. That's how I want it to work. Now I can start uh, removing some of the ratio. It doesn't need to be 100 to 1. Let's try more like 5 to 1 or 6 to 1. That sounds pretty good. Now I can adjust my ratio a little bit more. So if I'm pulling it all the way down, it's causing it to react. What I want it to do is bouncing between 3 and 6. That's a good spot. Now I can use my gain to get back, because I'm, I'm reducing the gain by probably about 4 or 5 dB. So I'm going to grab this, and we'll bring this back up to, say, 5 dB. I'll bypass. Hear the difference? The compressor is really accenting, bringing out the initial attack of that drum sound. If I bypass it, it's the same level. I'm not making it any louder. You could make it louder if you wanted to, but that's not the point. The point is to compress the sound to change it.